very much, Mr. Mayor. This is a, a real pl a pleasure for us to be here today. And I must say, this is an extraordinary view. Uh, and it is probably the biggest attraction point for faculty. You bring them into this room, they, they have to come. Uh, I must say, uh, on behalf of the president uh, and, and our administration, uh, it is a real honor and a pleasure to be with you today, really to celebrate the spirit of innovation and, frankly, entrepreneurship here in, in Bethlehem. Uh, we have been uh, thinking about, working on, and strategizing on ways in which we can kickstart the nation's economy. Earlier this week, uh, I had the pleasure of traveling with the president where we unveiled our nation's innovation strategy, a blueprint that will help to take the lessons that we're learning and more that we've gathered even here today uh, to replicate them across the country so that as we recover from this uh, difficult economic time, we emerge with a stronger foundation for high wage, high growth jobs that many of whom will be born uh, through one or two person businesses and several we met just in the uh, tour we had this, this morning. This celebrated uh, spirit of entrepreneurship has been the cornerstone of how we've approached economic policy in just the few, first few months in this administration. Out of the economic recovery package, some $100 billion of spending dedicated towards infrastructure and the overall innovation ecosystem. We celebrate here a story that the Secretary will share in much larger detail, uh, the celebration that we have, the investment that we're making, that we think will be an investment into that future. But before the Secretary comes up, I thought I might describe for you how the three pillars of the President's innovation strategy relate to the work you all are doing right here. First, we acknowledge that for our nation to be successful, we have to build the building blocks for innovation. Now, for many, in the traditional sense of the word, that is highway construction, uh, bridges and roads and so forth, but in today's 21st century innovation infrastructure, that means the wet lab facilities, that means ensuring we have access to high-speed broadband, that means that we have access to stronger research and development capacity so that our brightest minds in this country can commercialize those ideas and bring them to market, maybe not tomorrow, but in the 5, 10, 15, 20 years to follow. Second. We know that we have some very significant challenges today, so we must bring uh, innovation to those national priorities in healthcare, and energy, uh, of course, in public safety and education. In just our brief tour of the facility, we met entrepreneurs in any, every one of those categories. On healthcare, we saw strategies that would help improve quality and lower cost. But third, and perhaps most important to today's announcement, we must create the economic climate that spurs entrepreneurship. We do not know what company will be in the Fortune 500 50 years from now, but we know that 50% of the current Fortune 500 began in periods of economic decline as small businesses. So many of whom, we, any, many of those in the future we anticipate might very well be born today. This notion that the asset we're celebrating is in Bethlehem the President believes is actually a larger discussion about how this plugs into Northeast Pennsylvania dare I say as a New Jerseyan, even across the way, an asset that the entire region could benefit from. As students and faculty and entrepreneurs and large corporations come to see the asset base that you're building here, the investments we're making will have far-reaching implications. This notion of innovation clusters, the key cornerstone of our economic growth strategy. But I end as I introduce the honored guest today to provide for you the broader context for why we're here. I share this coming from Virginia. We are both commonwealths, and there is this notion in commonwealth that we share a spirit, a spirit that while we have public policy and we have formal rules and actions, commonwealth means we speak to one another as family, that we share a hand, we extend a hand, the entrepreneurs we met sharing a hand, a hand with others to share equipment and share ideas so that they can be successful. That's that spirit of commonwealth. And it is that spirit that is why I want to share with you the, uh, the, the, the honored speaker here today. The Commerce Secretary, Gary Locke, understands this spirit of Commonwealth. As the governor of the great state of Washington, he saw firsthand what it meant to build an economic infrastructure for the 21st century economy. He is one of the crown jewels of the Obama administration, and it's a real honor and a privilege to join him today. Please welcome Commerce Secretary, Gary Locke.